As I'm a local, I want to just share with yourself some condition, information about conditions about Muslims here in India, which is becoming from bad to us. And in the near future, I fear that there will be mass genocide, as hate crimes have already started. This brother is warning us of genocide. We can't take this email lightly. And my first comment, and our sisters, in India, uh, who are now facing danger, unprecedented in their history, unprecedented in their history. So now then, would you show me by, by raising your hand, those of you who were born in India or your parents were born in India? Okay, so we have about half the audience. So, so you have some connection with the subject. And our topic is India's Muslims, the way forward. And I've chosen this topic because of so many Indian Muslims contacting me and begging me to do something. Apparently, uh, the, the, the scholars of Islam in India, perhaps, have not been able to satisfy them and they felt the need for me to bring my Islamic eschatological input into the subject. So I've been bombarded with lots and lots of requests from India, and some of them sending me emails <laughs> informing me of what is happening on the ground in India and in Kashmir. I'm keeping, I've been kept informed all the time. And I want to begin with one email, <laughs> one email from India, just one. Uh, on the subject of the plight, the unprecedented plight that India's Muslims now face. Bismillah. This lecture is not going to be long, but the question and answer session is more important than the lecture because it is in the question and answer session. Is this live? Is it being? Right, okay. So you might be able to get some, some people right, sending you um, messages from India while I'm speaking. No, okay. It is in the question and answer session and, and my hearing is declining. So instead of you having to repeat your question 10 times, it's better that you write it out and send it to me because I have to get a hearing aid, okay? Now then, it is your question that you will pose to me on this subject that will help us to move forward in the directions which are the most urgent and important, inshallah. So be careful with your questions. Bismillah. Here is an email from an Indian Muslim. It's been a long time since last I sent an email to you, but I do listen to your lectures without fail for several years now. To again brief you, I'm the same person who was working abroad and upon your advice, I left the job and came back home to India. And I am from Mumbai, the commercial city. <coughs> I've started my own business here in Mumbai. And I've also uh, started a mango plant um, garden and so on in the remote mountains. I just saw your YouTube uh, video regarding the wave power, the lecture on the 6th of May. As I'm a local, I want to just share with yourself some condition, information about conditions about Muslims here in India, which is becoming from bad to us. 
And in the near future, I fear that there will be mass genocide as hate crimes have already started. And they are killing and pressurizing the true voices as is done in every fascist regime to curb rightful voices. At the time of the Malhama, if people like me go to a village which is in the mountains, but as the Muslim population there in the village are sparse, villages are sparse, so they might ransack 20 or 30 houses in a village. Some villages have only five to 10 houses, whereas in larger cities like Mumbai, Hyderabad, Muslim population is sizable in the ghettos. We as Muslims are not on one platform. We are divided on sectarian platforms. Some of us are brethren, <laughs> some of us tablighis, some of us deobandis, some of us ahli hadith, and all divided naturally due to vast differences in culture and language in the north and the west and the south and the east of India. In spite of having two 100 million large population in India. We are a divided community for the above reasons. I request you kindly so to kindly guide us. We who will retreat in villages during the Malhama, guide us in respect of local riots where our population is sparse and also others who don't have religion and continue to remain in the city. Guide us. What should we do? Your guidance at this juncture is very important for our society is in a very trying time. Take care of your health and may Allah give you long life and good health. This brother is warning us of genocide. We can't take this email lightly. And my first comment is that one person cannot, on his own, deliver the answers as to what should be done. It has to be a collective effort with large numbers of scholars. But at least I would have put my small input, not claiming that this is the last word. And at all times, we must never lose faith in Allah. If we want to move forward, and if we want to get Allah's help, then Allah has said in the Quran, Allah will not intervene to change your condition. No, regardless of how pathetic it may be, He will not do it unless you take the initiative using his guidance to change your own condition. So if we are to get Allah's help to save our brothers and sisters, our children in India, from what he is talking about, genocide, it is clear that Allah's help will not come, despite all the dua, unless and until we use his guidance to change our own condition. No matter how bitter it may be for us, unless we accept our mistakes, we can't move forward. And that's the first stumbling rock we face the resistance of our people to accept that we have made mistakes. So long as they defend 
Muslim rule over India. For centuries, Hindu India, Muslims ruling over Hindu India. When Muslims are a small minority, and Hindus in India are the overwhelmingly large majority. And yet this small minority with armed force, with military power, is able to establish its rule over India and continue to rule over Hindu India for centuries. We have to ask our question, was that Mughal Empire, which established Muslim rule over India, was it established in accordance with the guidance located in the Quran? If there are those who want to defend it, that we had the right, we had the right to use war weapons to conquer India and to establish our rule over India, well, then don't turn to me to ask me for help now. Because Islam is not imperialism. And I'm reading now on Mughal rule over India. I'm reading the subject. And I have found that there is no evidence at all that the wars which were waged to establish rule over India were wars that were jihad, just war. A jihad or a just war is never waged, never waged, unless and until you have explored and exhausted all possible peaceful means to resolve the problem. When you have tried everything and nothing has failed, then you fight. That is jihad. And jihad is when you are attacked and you are defending yourself. That is jihad. And the jihad, jihad is when a people are oppressed. Al-Mustadafina min al-Rijali wa jwilani. People who are helpless, men, women, and children, and they're oppressed and they're crying out <laughs> for help. Then you are allowed, not allowed, you are obliged to fight, to liberate the oppressed, provided they are asking you to come and liberate them. Hindu India never ask Muslims to come and liberate them from oppression. And so Muslim rule over India was not established in accordance with the guidance of the Quran. And we cannot therefore defend it. We have to call a spade a spade. And we have to accept that the Hindu is right, he is justified in being very harsh and very uh, reject, rejecting Muslim rule over India and it wants to have some revenge for it. We have to accept they have the right to do that. And we were wrong. So the first step on the road to resolving the plight and the predicament of India's Muslims today is to change our own condition using Allah's guidance and to call a spade a spade and to recognize that Muslim rule over India was Islamic imperialism and had no part of Islam in it. And we have to apologize for what was done in the name of Islam and say, no, this is the religion of Islam does not condone what was done. More than that, the Mughal rule over India sometimes expressed itself with Mughal emperors and their, their armies destroying Hindu temples. So we have to answer the question. Prepare yourself, Indian Muslims. You have to answer this question, yes or no. 
Does the Quran permit you to go and destroy all the Hindu temples in India? Yes or no? If this is your view, that the religion of Islam permits you, requires you to go and destroy the Hindu temples, as the Mughal rule did, then don't turn to me for guidance. Please go ask somebody else to help you. Ask somebody else to help you. I have not found this in the Quran. No. That you have, you have the right to go and destroy the Hindu temples. And sometimes they will destroy a Hindu temple and build a masjid in its place to add some salt <laughs> to the wound. So we, we say that in order to start the process of going forward, we ask the scholars of India who would listen to this lecture or the message will be reached out to them that the first step on the road to trying to resolve the problem is to establish that Mughal rule over India and the destruction of Hindu temples was not permitted by the religion of Islam. Once you're clear on that, then you say, we apologize for what they did. And we do not want to be blamed for what they did.